Now, talking about the late Kobe Bryant would not be complete without hearing from one of his fans. And for that, let us invite our guest slash fellow host, Paul Haleli. Good day, Paul. Hey, guys. Hi. Uh, sorry, caught me off guard there when you said uh, guest. I was looking really hard. <laughs> <laughs> guest. All right. Uh. All right, Paul. First and foremost, yes. what was your first impression of Kobe all the way back in 1996? Now, we all know you've been following basketball since, what, the 80s and the 90s, right? Mm. Your first well, impression. Now, now you're just being mean. You're revealing my age. <laughs> TV, but, uh, Takes one yeah. to know one, Paul. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Back in the day, we didn't have the internet, uh, uh, as you know, so um, we would follow basketball through a magazine, a publication called Slam Magazine. Mm -hmm. And Slam Magazine would have a little ticker on the bottom of mm -hmm. several pages that would update you on, like, upcoming stars. Uh, for example, LeBron James was featured years later as well as, uh, some, uh, as a ticker saying, LeBron Watch. Well, Kobe was on the eye of a lot of uh, basketball scouts as well. Um, so in 96, I already knew who he was, but never really saw him play. We didn't have YouTube back then either. Mm. So the first time I got to see him play, as you know, he wasn't drafted to the Lakers. He was actually traded to the Lakers um, that same day, like on, on, the, on draft day. So when he, when he played for the Lakers, he didn't even play in the beginning. And I think that was my first impression of him. It was like he got no playing time because the Lakers were already a well-established team. So you would only see Kobe when... Uh, when it was when they were leading by a lot and there would just be a final quarter just we call it garbage time And we'll put him in a garbage time but this guy played harder than anyone of the other guys wow. played the entire mm, game mm. So he caught your eye and he was this guy when it was a time when basketball was uh, You know guys had had uh, shaved heads Michael mm. Jordan had a yeah. shaved head and this guy had like had a, a mini afro growing <laughs> mini So it really was yeah. eye-catching yeah, yeah, Right you remember that so I, I my first impression with him was wow, this is a guy that really wants to make a statement. Like, he really wants to come out and prove himself immediately. He did not wait uh, to, to get his chance. He, he took it. He went out there and grabbed it. And I think that was my first impression of him. And I think that still kind of sticks to me to this day because I always feel like first impressions are everything. And if you make a strong enough first impression, um, everything else just falls into place. It's amazing to think that he was not even the first pick. It was the 13th in the first round, right? Correct. Iverson was the Correct. first. And that's another thing that I think is, impre that is impressive is that, um, you know, a lot of people nowadays, you know, you talk about top three picks, top five picks. He mm. wasn't even in the top ten. But yeah. he didn't let that get to him. He didn't, you know, a lot of people, your confidence will go down if mm. you don't get the recognition you think you deserve. Um, in his case, they didn't bother him at all. He just said, okay, I'll play the last two minutes of the game, but I'm going to show you why you should be putting in me for the first 20 minutes of the game. Wow. So it's very clear that actually Kobe has a lot of good qualities. And as you mentioned, Paul, so um, is there anything else that made Kobe your, you know, role model that, you know, his qualities impacted your life? Uh, I, I think, yeah, I think um, he, everybody always talks about his work ethic. I think uh, a lot of people just use that phrase, uh, Mamba mentality, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it's great that he's left that kind of image behind as well. But I think a lot of people don't understand that it's not, it wasn't a hashtag. I mean, it really was a way of life. It was the way he lived his life. And um, I'll give you an example of what I, I relate to a lot, um, because I'm sure you've heard a lot of his anecdotes already. So I'll give you stories that maybe you haven't heard. Um, there was a time when Kobe visited uh, Southeast Asia. Mm. I believe he was making a trip to Singapore uh, mm. with the with the brand that was uh, that he was endorsed by, and they brought him in for I believe a two day trip. One of them one of the days was like a press day, mm. a meet and greet, and this is a story I heard right from one of the uh, bosses at Nike that uh, that brought him there. So no, you, you mentioned apparently the brand his already. flight arrived something <laughs> like past yeah. I, I think his flight arrived something like 1.30 a.m. Mm. So you can imagine by the time you got through the airport or, or, or got to his hotel, mm -hmm. apparently the hotel already had instructions to block off the floor where their gym was. It was a very nice five-star hotel, mm. a very big gym. It was very complete. And they blocked it completely off. And remember, he has like a full two-day agenda. He's just traveled probably like a 15-hour flight. And the first thing he did when he got to his hotel was he went to use the gym because they already had cordoned off that floor for him. Wow. And he wasn't going to miss a workout just because he had traveled for more than half yeah. the day on the mm. plane. And um, I, I feel like I'm like that in a lot of ways. Like you guys know. I uh, see you. I see that in you, Paul. It doesn't matter how tired I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the gym. And I, 
I don't do that because of Kobe Bryant, but I can mm. relate with Kobe Bryant yeah, because yeah, of yeah. that, because I can understand how it feels to, I don't want to waste any time. And I yeah. think it's it's sad that he, he, he went so early, but I think he maximized every minute, every second of every day of his life that I feel like he led such a full life already. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, um, I have uh, some of my friends um, who are mourning a lot about uh, Kobe's passing uh, back in the days, like two years ago. And some of my friends even, they, they got paralyzed uh, because of, of, of this uh, huge loss of Kobe Bryant because they did adore him so much. But for you, for Paul Pilelli, how much do you adore him? Do you think like uh, you got uh, lots of things in you in terms of work ethics at the moment because, uh, you know, uh, from Kobe Bryant or aside from uh, not wasting time kind of thing, mm. uh, is there anything that you actually uh, took from him? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, a few things before I answer that. Um, it goes to show you how uh, much of an age difference Hans has with me because he calls <laughs> two years ago back in the yeah, day. Yeah, Hans is only 20 but, years old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, he, well, um, I wouldn't say I adore him because I never knew him personally. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you that uh, I'm, I'm not a crier. I don't like to cry at movies. I'm just, I'm just not that type of person. Mm -hmm. But he's the only guy, and it didn't happen on the day that he died. It happened about... I can't remember if it was a week or two later when there was a ceremony held at Staples Center. It was, yeah. I think, a two-hour ceremony, yeah. something like that. And it was only near the end where I think I saw a montage that my eyes uh, watered up. And I've never um, shed a tear for anyone, wow. barely even for people I know, let alone for somebody I didn't know. And that mm. was when I realized maybe this does have a more profound impact on me mm. than I thought. And I started to think about why. Mm. And you asked me what it is that um, makes me, you know, quote unquote, adore him. But I, I do love him I, I, from what I know of him because I didn't know him personally is that as much as he worked so hard he was he was crazy he was crazy like in the sense that he would study his opponent to death like he would mm. know which hand was the wow. strong hand mm. he would know which side to guard him he would know how to kind of position himself so that he could kind of put the, his opponent in a weaker position just little things like that so meticulous that you would think yeah. someone would have to be a little bit crazy to be like that mm. but then at the end of it all at the end of a story 20 year such an accomplished career when he said he, he was going to retire, he meant it. Michael Jordan, remember, came back twice mm -hmm. after yes, he retired. that's right. Because he loved the game. And if you, you know, I'm not knocking on Michael, but, you know, Michael chose obviously basketball or business over his family life in the end. Yeah, and yeah. Kobe was the other way around. Everybody talks mm -hmm. about how Kobe wanted to be like Michael, yes. And everybody talks about how Michael, you know, looks at him as a little brother. But let's not forget, that statement was only released after he passed away. Mm. In fact, Michael didn't really like that he was compared to Kobe <laughs> most of the time. Oh. So that only happened post-mortem. Uh, so back to Kobe, I think the thing I appreciate most about him is when, no matter how crazy he was about basketball, how much he loved basketball, when he was ready to give it up, he gave it up, and he gave it up for good. Yeah, like, yeah. he really focused on his family. You guys saw in the last few years, although it was such a, a small sample size we had, he still gave it all to his family. He gave that same crazy work ethic and passion and dedication, but instead he directed it to his family. And I think that hit home to me because I have a family of my own. And I think, wow, if someone that busy and that committed to his career mm -hmm. can, you know, commit that much to his family as well, it puts us to shame. Um, Paul, now, back uh, earlier today, Hans mentioned what I thought about Kobe Bryant and is he on par with Michael Jordan? Well, if you remember back in the 90s, Grant Hill, Iverson, they were all touted as the next MJ, right? And then here comes the yes. 13th pick in the first round, Kobe Bryant from the Charlotte Hornets, nobody thought of, <laughs> to be the next Michael Jordan. Mm. Is it fitting to say that Bryant would be Jordan 2.0 or in a different class on his own? Um, if you talk about playing style, yes. Um, and he's never made a secret of the fact that he, you know, he's the biggest fan of Jordan and he tried to emulate the way he played. Like, we all do that. I mean, think about it. The way, the way I broadcast on the program, I actually got it from somebody else. I had a mentor. I had somebody I looked up to. I had a role model. I think mm. we all do, whether we realize it or not. And he's actually openly admitted it. But I think where, that's where the comparisons end. I think uh, Michael Jordan, I'm sure you agree that he's just naturally gifted. He just had it. He's the best basketball 
basketball player ever. Mm -hmm. However, Kobe didn't have the talent. He mm. actually had to make it up with hard work. Right. He had to make it up with hours and hours in the gym. He had to work on his craft. He did, and he had to study the game. He was a student of the game. He actually, you know, studied his opponents. He watched game tape, and you, you know, that's back in the day when we had videotape, Han. In case yeah. you didn't know, <laughs> not everything was digital back then. It wasn't that easy. So I think that that's the comparisons end there because I think uh, Kobe was in a in a class of his own in that sense. I don't yeah. think anybody worked as hard as Kobe. And I wow. think um, what he lacked in skill, he made up in, in dedication and passion. Mm -hmm. And I also think that, um, you know, as much as we want to compare because their styles were the same, mm. I think their mindsets were different. And I think that uh, overall, I can appreciate, I think we can all appreciate somebody who is less talented, mm. but can make us compare him to somebody who is just so much more gifted. Yeah, like the styles, the expressions, the, the facial expression, the fist in the air, it's all Michael Jordan yeah. right there. Yeah, well, he almost, I don't it know is. whether and this I, is, I, yeah. I don't know whether this is true or not, but he almost gave up Nike and made his own brand, Mamba, just because he didn't like the design and he didn't really trust the Nike's um, designer for the shoes, so he was really controlling that as well. So, Paul, this leads to my next question, which is probably the last question, if yep. Hans doesn't have yep. any. <laughs> what is the most memorable Black Mamba moment to you? I think Hans has some questions for me, but after we get off here... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, gonna go we... going on and on and on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not suitable for TV. So, um, my, my, the, the, the sneaker thing is interesting. I just want to comment a little bit on that. Mm. Um, you guys know how big Air Jordans are now. Oh, like, yes. Everyone's wearing them as hype sneakers. But ask anyone who actually plays either competitive or recreational basketball, mm -hmm. which sneaker yeah. would you rather wear to play basketball? Jordans or Kobe's? I bet you 99% of them will say Kobe's, <laughs> if not 100. Yes. So my most <laughs> memorable <laughs> Mamba moment. Um, unfortunately, there's two. Um, a good one and a bad one. I'll start with the bad one, because most people like bad news first. The bad one was, <laughs> I believe it was 2006, when he became the second, uh, where he set the record for the second highest scoring game uh, ever in NBA history by scoring 81 points. Mm. I say it's bad because he scored it against my Toronto Raptors. So <laughs> that will never be uh, forgettable, right. because that was truly a Mamba moment. Yep, and um, and I think that uh, the one that is uh, the one that stands out the most was when he ruptured his Achilles. Which, unfortunately, mm. if you think about it, that was pretty much the end of his career because he did play a few seasons after that, but it was hampered by so many injuries, shoulder, knees, that you know it was really irrelevant um, his level of play. But that Achilles injury, and if you guys know what an Achilles injury is, it's not actually caused by. Uh, somebody uh, running into you or it's it's caused by a twist of an ankle it can actually rupture if it was already slightly torn and he, mm. he was jogging up the court when it tore and he said he felt like it was just somebody kicking him in the back of the leg but if you know what an achilles tendon does that's it it's non-functional and you'll have to get it repaired you'll have to get it um, um surgery on it so what he did was he went out and he shot his free throws because that was it was it was his turn to shoot free throws at the end of that play mm. and what what normal people would do is they would just take him back to the locker room to the yeah. hospital likely he did but he went out and he shot his free throws first and then he went back and wow. at that time we didn't know what was wrong with him we only found out later that it was he tore his achilles tendon or achilles uh -huh. heel uh -huh. um I, and i guess that kind of sums it all up for kobe he wasn't going to let somebody else go out there and shoot his free throws for him and, uh -huh. and i believe he made them both too so that goes to wow. show you that's kobe well, this is oh, some kind of, we, this is actually the whole lecture yes. from Paul Pelelli yes, yes. about Where Kobe Bryant and also <laughs> basketball. Let's learn for me, uh -huh. some, somebody who, who came from like non-basketball background, <laughs> yeah. but now this is a perfect opportunity to test Paul's knowledge All of right. Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Only uh -oh. this time, <laughs> Paul is not alone. We have someone who also claims to be a fan of Kobe Bryant. Oh no! Let's Who is he? the challenge. Hey, our C Jack. Our uh -oh. C Jack. I don't know. He knows a lot about Kobe Bryant. Do you know a lot about Kobe Bryant, C Jack? <laughs> um. Oh. He's a bigger fan than I am. Oh, he is. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. But this, these are actually the questions that is, um, okay. which is made by the producers and also best, best believe that I also got the answers from them because, you know. I'm a dummy when it comes to uh, <laughs> basketball. So now, uh, for Paul, the first question. Kobe put on a show in his last NBA game. How many points did mm. he score in that game to end his career? 60. Uh, 
Sixty. I, I wasn't even complete. Okay, my one sentence. for Paul. No, he doesn't need you to complete. I wasn't even sentence. complete my question. All right, All right. So got one. No need. I'll save you guys the time. <laughs> so, um, for C Jack now. For C Jack, who is the Lakers All Star from Spain who helped him win another championship in 2007? All right, he cannot speak, so he will he write, write something. He'll write it down, all right. Yes. Oh, he'll write I was down. wondering. I thought I was going to finally hear C. Jack's voice. No, no, no. no. Oh, he got it right. right. Yes. <laughs> okay, one for Paul and one for C. Jack. Now for Paul. While right. playing beside Shaq, how many championships did Kobe win in a row? Ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh my God, you got it right again. Hey, Paul, do you know who those uh, <laughs> rivals were? Wow. <laughs> Oh, well, the, I know. I know he. Uh, they they had that undefeated playoff run and lost one game to the Philadelphia 76ers yes. uh, on Allen Iverson, and then they won that championship. Uh, I believe he won another one against the Detroit Pistons. No, wait, Detroit Pistons beat beat them. Hmm. I forgot who the other two right now off the top of my head. It's not part of the question, is it? We're just, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're just testing you. <laughs> the Pacers, perhaps. Uh I'm sure C-Jack will know. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right, so for, for C-Jack, on December the 14th, 2014, who did Kobe pass on the all-time leading scorer list? All right. Oh, my God. Let's give him three seconds. They know three, it on the back of their hands. Two, one. And exactly. Jordan, who's yes. M? Like Muhammad. Muhammad Jordan. No, that's Michael Jordan. No, that's Michael not Muhammad Jordan. Jordan. That's yeah. Michael Jordan. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's only right because I don't know anything about basketball. All right, so. That's not for Paul. Muhammad Jordan. All right. Which next. team did Kobe defeat in the NBA Finals to win his first championship? The first championship. Hmm, this is this is the one that I'm having trouble with. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think. Wait, 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 wait. Is there a time limit on this? <laughs> Let's give him five seconds. Uh, Let's give him uh, yeah. five. I'm gonna have to three, say I'm gonna have to say the Indiana, Indiana Pacers, two, but I'm not sure. Is it the Indiana Pacers? One. You were correct. Paul, yeah, it was a worth it. Five oh seconds. Oh my Paul. God! You as got it right. You you you, 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 right? you yes. weren't even sure about it, yet you correct. Yeah, I'm you, like, yes, you but, got it right. No, I, I knew it was the first or second. I just didn't know which one. Yeah. You right. know what? Everybody in the control room is just so happy right now to hear that. <laughs> that is actually correct. So for CJ, can you identify the honor Kobe received? Kobe received in uh, 2008. The only time he earned it in his career. You know, with Paul nodding. Three. Like, huh. Okay, like, let, let's get That's like five, four, a certain nod. three, two, one. Yes. NBA, NBA, NBA MVP. MVP, that's right. That's right. Wow. Woo. You guys are amazing. Oh, amazing. Now for Paul, in which season did Kobe first wear the number 24 jersey after changing from his previous number? Ooh, is it 2000 and I want to say 2006. Mm -hmm. Is it 2006? Is that your final answer? Uh, yes. <laughs> that is also correct. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is just is easy yes. for Paul. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. No, no, I just remember. I think he was. changed it exactly halfway through his career. That's why it's not hard to remember because he was drafted in 96. So I, I just remembered somewhere like halfway through his career. All right. So uh, the last question. This is actually for CJ. Which former Lakers legend did Kobe pass in 2010? to become the all-time leading scorer for the franchise. Uh-oh, he's having a headache. Ah. Ha. This Hi. one's tricky. <laughs> this one's tricky. You should Four. not be Four. Ha. Three. For an easy thing. Two. <laughs> one. Come on, C-Jack, you can do it. That oh, is also <laughs> correct. <laughs> this is a tie. You got it. Wow. You got it. The Mie logo. That yeah. is correct. Wow. Guys, you guys are so amazing. Kobe will be so proud of you. Yeah. He would have been so proud you of you. You know your things <laughs> like the back of your hands. Yeah. <laughs>
I, I have a suspicion that Cjek helped you guys write this segment, but I'm not sure. His no, it wasn't him. Familiar. It wasn't him. It was the other producer. <laughs> no, I know, I know. He's not. He knows more about Kobe than I do. Paul, Good stuff, Cjek. Thank you so much. And talking about basketball, putting you as our source, making you look so smart. I want everyone in the control room to take a note on this. Put something that I'm really good at and make me the source. <laughs> okay. Well, you're very competitive. <laughs> you're very competitive. Thank you so yeah, much, Paul. Thank you, 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 Thank you so much, Paul. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, so CJ. Stay safe, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You too. We will, you too. Wow. Okay.